Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifics where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Our first story today is about scientists who are learning to develop new medical strategies for therapeutics and vaccines from a worm species. Yeah, that's right, a study that was published in Science Immunology Journal by Swiss scientists observes the behaviour of a parasitic worm called helmets to understand how they evade the immune responses of their hosts. The helmet worms have a specific protein called helmet glutamate dehydrogenase, which redirects the host immune cells so that instead of attacking the parasite, the cells start suppressing immune responses like inflammation. That's a pretty neat trick. And now, scientists have figured out how the worm makes this happen. How will this help us? Well, the epigenetic process through which the helmets are able to manage this evasion of immune response can first be used to treat helmet infections themselves. But also, any process that reduces inflammation in bodies is very helpful in therapies that address asthma or other allergies that lead to inflammation itself. In a new study that was published by Cambridge University, Australian scientists found that the continent has lost over 9,000 species of insects, butterflies, spiders and worms to extinction since 1788. More importantly, they predict that between 40 to 140 species could go extinct this year too. This study is an analysis of species and biodiversity decline after European colonization of the continent, according to the paper. While officially the Australian government has only recognized 10 species as extinct, the scientists reveal how the number is much higher when you take into account the hundreds of undiscovered species, that is the species that were lost before they were even discovered because of rapid habitat loss. How the scientists have gone about this study is that they have taken five different estimates of endemic Australian invertebrate species at the time that the Europeans first came to the region. And then, they've applied advanced modelling techniques by calculating the average extinction rate based on existing records. The main goal of the study was to stress the importance of conservation and research for biodiversity preservation, especially in a period of rapid climate change. The next story looks at an event in April 2021, when Sir Roja and Odette two tropical cyclones collided in the Indian Ocean. This seemingly normal event actually led to some pretty surprising observations according to two German scientists that have used satellite data and ARGO floats, which are devices used by the ARGO International Program to measure the salinity of seawater to analyse what actually happened when these cyclones met. The study found that when two cyclones collide, they lead to a massive upswelling of water, which means that extremely cold water from 200 meters deep in the ocean is brought up to the surface at a very high speed. What this does is decrease the temperature of the ocean surface dramatically. Upswelling is a common phenomenon in cyclones in the ocean generally, but in this case, the level at which it happened is what's surprising. Also, the cyclones interacted and shaped each other too. At first, one tried to suppress the other. And then, after the collision, they also changed courses. The reason why this study is important, according to the authors, is because global warming has already been proven to be a factor that will increase tropical cyclones, both in their numbers and in their intensity. If you are able to understand how they react in such situations, it will help our understanding and modelling of these extreme weather events. Finally, let's move to a study by US scientists who use artificial intelligence to analyse five different climate models and predict when the world will breach the 1.5 degrees Celsius global warming limit. The machine learning model predicted that by 2040 or before, most of the world would have been 1.5 degrees Celsius warmer than pre-industrial levels. But more worryingly, the study says that by 2060, most of the world will even surpass the 3 degrees Celsius mark of global warming, according to what their trained AI model found. The study based these analyses on a regional level, and it showed 
that places like South Asia would probably reach 2 degrees Celsius warming by 2040. The study is again a predictive climate model and it draws on the data and uncertainty of existing models like the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and other sources. However, the authors do ring an alarm bell for how these numbers could affect policy making, especially in regions where the thresholds are expected to be crossed much sooner. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning into the print.